Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. This one goes out to Kelly O'Neill and Prince Kusunka. How to make a PNG, a portable network graphics logo, and import it into Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so the reason most people will ask for a portable network graphics PNG or ping logo is to keep transparency. So a logo shows up in front like this, it's transparent and everything else around it, you can see through it. If it's got a white solid flat background, then it's a problem. And you have to remove that white background. I'll show you something in the end, we'll look at it. It's not always perfect and it can be a little bit tedious, but you can remove a white background or any colored background in Photoshop with a little bit of work. Now, if you are creating it from scratch in something like Photoshop or even better, something like Illustrator, which is more suited to logo creation, then you just don't create a white background and you've got that um, uh, done. You can export out of both Illustrator and Photoshop as a PNG file. Um, you can also, and this is the best solution, use your Creative Cloud library, then there's no issue with transparency, no issue with export. You're working with native file formats. Remember, Premiere Pro can work with native Photoshop files, native Illustrator files that are already transparent. So let's take you through creating it, exporting it, importing it, and then yes, I'll go and remove all the white background in the end. Oh yeah, it's such a pain. Here we go. So I'm in Premiere Pro and I wanna put a logo over this video that we've got here from Adobe Stock. I'll start um, in Adobe Illustrator and there's a view format where you can show the transparency grid. It's also shift control D, shift command D on the Mac. And you can see that's transparent. This isn't, that is a white piece that I want there to help back up the type. The rest of these are just shapes. They're just simple shapes that have been created inside Illustrator. And I've got a few tutorials about working with things like the pen tool, but you can create things like this um, fairly easy in Illustrator. And in the file menu, you can go to export in older versions, you won't have as many choices, but if you choose export as, and one of the choices is portable network graphics. So if I export this out from there, you'll get a dialog box that is asking to keep the background color transparent. I don't have any background color, so you can see the little checkerboard in there, it's transparent. It's always good to keep this on a high resolution and don't worry about this uh, and don't turn on um, interlaced and click OK. That's it, we've got our, our ping. Let's just jump into, into Premiere Pro and, and import that in, just to show you that it's, it's fairly easy. So in the file menu, choose to import. This is one place I wouldn't uh, necessarily go to the media browser, it's, it's much simpler. There's our um, ping file, there's the Illustrator file, which I could also use. But if I open that up, drag that on top, look at it there, scale this down, so I'm gonna take this, there it is, logo's done. It's that simple. The transparency was from Illustrator, okay? So that's, that's one way. Now, it would be the exact same in Photoshop. So if I just show you in Photoshop, I, I opened, I copied and pasted the Illustrator artwork as pixels in uh, Photoshop and it shows up and I've got no background. So you gotta make sure that you, by default, Photoshop does have a background layer. You just got to make sure to delete that out of there. File, save as, and one of the formats you can save as is a portable network graphics file, a ping file. It's just the same, no problem. I want to show you the advantage of using Creative Cloud. Watch how easy this is to go right from Illustrator right to the timeline in Premiere Pro. Now I'm going to select all of this artwork and I've got my library panel here. I'm just going to drag this into my library and it shows up. And if I wanted to, I could rename this Studio Logo. Now when I jump back to Premiere Pro and go to my libraries, oh, there it is. And watch this, I'll drag this in Could that be any easier? Absolutely not. And you can actually update this from Illustrator, change all the colors, it's gonna change in here. This is why I love working with Creative Cloud Libraries because 
If I go over to After Effects, guess what's in there? This logo. Photoshop, guess what's in here? The logo, the logo, the logo. I have my own video revealed uh, library where I've got my logo, background colors, the gradient colors that I work with, all the little things that I need in any application that's quickly available. I wanted to show you back in Photoshop, we don't have a transparency. Let's say you're opening this up and the background is the background. There is no transparency here. You need to get this out. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a chore because remember, I wanted white in here and I don't want white in there. So I'm going to make a selection and pop this onto its own layer up here. So I'll make a selection, layer, new, new layer via copy and it puts that on its own layer. So I don't have the, I'm not gonna lose the white piece that I have there. Same thing down here. New, buy a copy. Oh, and make sure I go back to that background, back to the background where the object is, new via copy. Okay, so now I've got those on their own layer. So they're protected. Now we're gonna to try to remove the rest. And a tool that, that I will occasionally use, and I'm, I don't really like the eraser a lot, But the magic eraser tool, if you click in the white area, it gets rid of it. And if we zoom into that area, you'll see a little bit of a fringe here, which shouldn't be a problem. So that is the magic eraser tool. It's going to remove white anywhere on the background. And you'll notice that it got rid of the white in the type. So if I turn those back on, we're back to something with transparency. So that particular eraser tool, the magic um, eraser tool, is the only eraser tool I will, will uh, use. It's working really well on here, admittedly, because this is very clean artwork that was copied and pasted right in Photoshop with not a lot of, a lot of, of compression on the edges. If this is a, an older um, file that's been saved many times, let me just show you that. If I am having problems uh, with that eraser taking too much away, uh, by the way, at the top, you can change uh, what the tolerance level is, whether it's anti-alias that's gonna smooth the ed edges, whether it's going to use only contiguous pixels, that's the pixels that it can select to. If you turn this off, and click, it's gonna get rid of white everywhere, including in the middle area here, which we don't want. We need the white to back up that microphone and that shield uh, area in there. So we need that on. And then you can change the overall opacity uh, of what you're removing too. So um, we want it 100% removed. You can also use the, se the selection tool to make selections in here. And once you have those selections, you can click on the Select and Mask tool. And uh, we need to invert that right here, invert it. So we're choosing the opposite way. Uh, so you can use these tools in here to help make that selection. If the magic eraser isn't working, you can smooth those edges out. You can also shift the edge. So this is probably the biggest one. If you're having troubles uh, removing that, shifting the edge. Sometimes when you're using that magic erase tool, it, it's not getting close enough to the edge and deleting that. It's le leaving a fringe. So you make a selection, you use this uh, quick select, and then you choke that in is what it's called. You're, you're taking your selection and moving it in. And the reason that this shift edge is is good is because it does it mathematically perfect all the way around, which is better than you trying to do it by hand. So if you are stuck with a PNG logo that's a flattened file that you need to make into a separate file, you can do it this way. If you're creating this from scratch, as I showed you, it's much better to do this in Illustrator or in Photoshop uh, and then 
use that as a native or Illustrator or Photoshop. I will save every single bit of artwork always as, as native Photoshop or Illustrator. If it's a logo, it's an Illustrator file with all the layers, so I can always go back into that. All right. Whew, so there you go, uh, Kelly and uh, Prince. Hopefully you found this informative and uh, now you can get to work and, and get your Ping logo stuck into your videos. Um, Hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. You want to take your support up a notch, join us over on Patreon for as little as one little dollar a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.